And welcome to the third attempt for the launch of a NASA Santa Rocket Black Variant 12 rocket carrying the Kinetics experiment. Launch window tonight is 8.04 to 8.44 p.m. So far today, uh, the payload and the vehicle have all been tested out. Everything is ready to go on that side. We have been, of course, watching the weather. Uh, the clouds, as you can see in the picture, are starting to uh, clear out. And so uh, we're getting really nice blue skies here. You can see the sun uh, and shadows uh, there on, on the island. Uh, we're also getting reports of clear skies in Bermuda, which are needed. Uh, at both sites, we do have camera stations on the ground that will be looking at the vapor releases that will occur as part of this launch. We do. We are uh, having concerns again with the uh, upper level winds. Uh, they have been um, not acceptable for launch up to this point, uh, but they have been dropping just a little bit uh, throughout the count. So hopefully as we get closer to the launch window and um, maybe towards the end of the window, we might have the winds be able to drop. We're also watching the ground winds, uh, which are, are variable and uh, which is not good for determining the pointing of the rocket. However, we're still counting for it tonight, and uh, hopefully the winds will... Uh, come down a little bit and be in our favor, and we'll be able to get the uh, launch off. TD, PM on one. Go for TD. Yeah, we'd like to uh, hold at T minus 15 once we get there. Copy. Program a TD. Program, go ahead. We're going to hold at 15. Copy that. Okay, so there you heard we're going to hold at T minus 15 minutes in the count um, as we evaluate the winds. Uh, continue to take measurements. The way we do that is we fly balloons, uh, and then we track those balloons and uh, get data on the wind speed of the balloons. That tells us, of course, the, the speed and direction of the winds, and then that goes into a program, and that tells us the uh, whether or not we can safely launch the rocket. Again, the rocket we're launching tonight is a Black Variant 12. This particular vehicle is 71 and a half feet tall, so it is our largest of the sounding rockets that we have in NASA's fleet. First stage is a Talos. Second stage is a Terrier. Third stage is a Black Brant motor. And the fourth stage is what we call the Nika motor. Sounding rockets are extremely fast vehicles. Uh, to give you an idea, the first stage Talos will TD, RSO, channel one. Go for TD. Yes, sir. Can you meet me on range 915, please? 105. So the first stage Talos. PM and SRPO MM Channel 5 for a status update. So the first stage tails will ignite and burn for only 6.4 seconds. At that point, at the burnout, it is at uh, only a mile altitude, but it's flying 1,051 miles an hour already at that point. Second stage Terrier then ignites at 25 seconds after uh, launch. It burns out at only 31.2 seconds, so again, it's a six-second burn. At that time, that's at 4.5-mile altitude, 
uh, flying at 1,651 miles an hour. Third stage Black Brant ignites at 35 seconds, burns out at 62.5, so it's a little bit longer burning, almost 30 seconds. That time of burnout, it's at 27 miles altitude, and uh, it's flying fairly quickly there at 4,724 miles an hour. And the fourth stage, Nika, burns, ignites at 95 seconds in the flight, uh, burns out at 115 seconds, and uh, at 60 miles altitude, and at that point, it is flying at 7,000 miles an hour. The rocket will be carrying the kinetics payload uh, to an apogee or peak altitude of about 302 miles. Uh, as part of this project, it will have uh, two barium vapor releases. Those will occur 9 to 10 minutes after launch at, in between 217 and 249 miles altitude. At that point, the uh, vapor releases will be 540, 560 miles downrange from Wallops. The sounding rockets are unguided rockets, and so it's a solid fuel that we use, and they are spin-stabilized, st which means they're, they fly similar to an arrow and that the fins have a little cant to them, so they're not perpendicular exactly to the, to the uh, motor itself. And so that as the rocket flies, the, or as it launches and flies, the rocket spins, which will help stabilize the rocket. In addition, for those large vehicles like this one, the Black Bank 12, we also have spin motors. They are located at the top of the first stage. So as soon as the vehicle clears the launcher, uh, they will fire and uh, spin up the motor very quickly, so the vehicle, so that it uh, stays stabilized during flight. And if you're just joining us, uh, we are going to hold at T-minus 15 minutes in the count. Uh, reason is that right now we still have high winds, upper-level winds, and also our lower-level winds are, are a little bit of an issue. And so uh, we're continuing to watch that, continuing to send balloons up to get uh, constantly getting uh, measurements of the winds. And uh, hopefully by the time the window gets to the end, we can get this rocket off. Window opens tonight at 8.04 and closes at 8.44. Launch windows uh, we have until May 16th to be able to launch this rocket.
And tonight with this mission is called Kinetics, which is the Kinetic Scale Energy and Momentum Transport Experiment. I know it's a lot. Uh, it's designed to study a very fundamental problem in space plasma, namely how energy and momentum are transported between different regions of space that are magnetically connected. For example, auroras, which are formed when particles in the Earth's near space environment interact with the atmosphere. According to Peter Delamere, with the Kinetics Principal Investigator from the University of Alaska Fairbanks, the electrons in Earth's space environment and then the solar wind have relatively low energies, yet the aurora is generated by very high energy electrons. So the big question becomes, what is the energy mechanism uh, that is driving this? Dr. Delamere continued, this is a very simple experiment with that we have known input parameters that will allow us to quantify the flow of energy to the electrons, and it is possible the kinetics payload will generate rural emissions on a very small scale, but that is an unknown aspect of this experiment. And we'll also have in situ measurements which will measure the energized electrons directly in addition to the uh, in situ measurements, we'll have specialized cameras that are located in Bermuda and here at Wallops, and also on an aircraft uh, from the NASA Langley Research Center in Hampton, uh, Virginia, which is flying just north of Bermuda, uh, and they'll be used to observe the interactions. The kinetic experiment consists of a single rocket launch carrying seven separable payloads, diagnostic instrumentation is carried on the main payload, and four small sub payloads. While the barium vapor clouds will be released from two additional larger sub payloads, this allows for a multiple view, point of view of the disturbances created by the barium, barium releases. The four small payload, sub payloads, also called nicknamed Bobs, each about the size of a two liter soda bottle, make measurements of the space environment through which the barium vapor induced disturbance travels. Barium vapor is not harmful to the environment or public health. It is expected to form, form highly visible clouds common to past missions. Um, it's not expected to form uh, clouds common to past missions from all of using vapor tracers. The vapor will be released about 9 minutes and 30 seconds to around 10 minutes after launch at about 217 to 249 miles altitude over the Atlantic Ocean, so it's just north of Bermuda. After exposure to sunlight, the vapor clouds quickly ionize and take on a violet cover. color. Immediately after release of the vapor, the spherical clouds are a mixture of green and violet, but that phase only lasts for about 30 seconds when the ionized component of the cloud is diffused away. And if you're just joining us, we are currently at T-minus 15 minutes and holding in the count for the Black Variant 12 launch tonight from Wallops. We are holding uh, due to high upper level winds, uh, similar to what we've had the last two attempts on Saturday and Sunday. And we are also looking at um, ground winds uh, that are, may cause a concern as we go through the, through the uh, window. The window tonight is 804-844.
Spock 312 is one of uh, about 15 rockets that we have in the NASA Sunrocket rocket fleet. Again, these are suborbital payloads, mainly for c c conducting science, but they're also used for technology development, uh, for instruments that may later fly on satellites, or also for educational programs, which we conduct uh, annually here at Wallops and with the Colorado Space Grant Consortium. We fly approximately uh, 20 tiny rockets on average per year. Uh, this year is an extremely busy one as we rebound from COVID. Last year, we were not able to do launches. Uh, so this uh, season is very busy. In addition to the Spock Grant 12 that we're getting ready, we have a flight next week out of the White Sands, New Mexico, carrying the Unis payload on a Black Grant 9. And the following week, we have a Terrier Improved Malamute scheduled for May 26 here out of Wallops. And again, will be a night launch. Will not be quite as tall as the Black Grand 12 and should only be visible to the Mid Atlantic region. If we do get the launch off tonight and you are able to see the launch of the green clouds, let us know by uh, sending us a message either on Facebook or Twitter. If you get those photos, please send them our way. We always like to see our projections on visibility versus uh, the actual, uh, what people are able to see. Of course, tonight uh, there's a lot of clouds in on the eastern United States. so. Uh, not everybody will have the opportunities to see everything, but uh, hopefully uh, we'll get uh, some clear skies so uh, some of us will be able to see it.
And if you just join us, we're currently at T-minus 15 minutes in holding for the launch of the Block Parent 12 rocket from NASA's Wallace Flight Facility here in Virginia. Reason for the hold is upper-level winds, same issue we've had the last two nights, uh, that they are going to exceed our safety criteria. We would not be able to have a safe launch if we were to launch the rocket with the winds the way they are. And then we're also looking at ground-level winds uh, that are, seem to be variable and uh, also are of a concern. However, we do have the window does go until 844 tonight, um, so we do still have some time, and they are constantly launching weather balloons or small balloons that allow us to measure the winds or track the balloons and measure the winds. That way, that goes into a, a computer that we have, program, and that tells us the uh, whether or not it will be safe to launch the rocket. TDPM. Go for TV. Yeah, do you have a status check with the vacage clearance and FAA contacts? Check that item out, I've done. Thank you, sir. Check 151.
Again, we're still holding at uh, T minus 15 minutes in the count for the Black Grant 12 launch. Concern this evening is the upper level winds, and we're trying to, they were slowly going down, and uh, so we're seeing if we're going to be able to make it in time to get the end of, the, at least the end of the window in front till 8.44 p.m. Again, sounding rockets are unguided rockets, so they're very wind sensitive. And just like uh, shooting an arrow at a target, we depend on the winds and look at the winds in order to hit that target in space that we need to get to to, to release, in this case, the vapors and, and the, all the sub payloads to do the measurement. MMPM on one. Go ahead. Hey, the word from the network guys is that the the issue is a connection between us and Greenbelt. Copy. TDR, so channel one. Go for TD. Yes, can I have you, SRPO, MM, and PM uh, meet me on five, please? Going to five. And that was the range safety officer calling for the test director, the project, man uh, payload, or the project manager for the range, and also Santa Rockets, um, basically doing a powwow, getting the latest updates on the winds. So we should have an answer here soon as to uh, whether or not we'll be able to continue.
Again, we are holding at T-minus 15 minutes for the launch of the Black Branch 12 rocket from NASA's Swallows Flight Facility in Virginia. Upper-level winds are a, still a concern, and uh, they're continuing to, to fly balloons to get data on those winds to determine whether or not it will be safe to conduct the launch. Uh, we will need to pick up the count by 829 in order PDR, to the so. window. Yes, sir, I have a status update. Copy, going to five, sir, PO, PM, MM, channel five. And all stations, TD, um, unfortunately, the winds are not going to cooperate with us tonight, so we're going to push 20, we're going to scrub for the night and push for tomorrow. Thanks for your support. Check with uh, your leaders for report time tomorrow. I assume it will be the same. So there you have it. The uh, winds got us, upper level winds got us again for the third night in a row. Uh, they were exceeding the uh, limits that allow us to do a safe launch with the Black Brand 12. So uh, we will reset everything and come back again tomorrow night with a launch time of 8.05 with the window that runs till 8.45. We will have a weather brief in the morning to take a look at the weather here at Wallops and also in Bermuda and also where the aircraft is flying. And so uh, watch the Wallace Facebook and Twitter sites for updates uh, probably in the latter part of tomorrow afternoon uh, as to uh, what our status is. Uh, but as of right now, we're still headed for another launch attempt tomorrow night at 8.05. Thanks for tuning in and hanging with us. And uh, this is part of the rocket business. We want to make sure that we do these flights safe. So thanks for joining us, and hopefully you can come back tomorrow night.